The irons in this golf bag you probably won't buy, but you probably should have. Let's get stuck into it. So the irons in question are the new ZX range from Strixon, Mark II of their irons. They released ZX range, I think about two years ago now, and they've come with an updated model. And for a reason, like I say, I think you won't buy them, but you probably should. And I'm going to explain why in this video. We've come down to Formby Ladies. And I'm going to play a few holes and talk you through some aspects, how they feel, how they sound, how they perform, what they cost, and why I think you should be actually giving these an actual look into maybe being the club that you next purchase. Let's, uh, let's head out and hit some of these beauties. And that has done exactly what it said on the tin. That's definitely the best feeling one. That is literally a half swing, what it feels like. And it's, it's covered the, uh, the pitching wedge comfortably. That's insane. So who are these irons aimed at for? Because like I said, there's three different models. Well, firstly, let's start ZX4. And this, if we looked at them as sort of like handicap orientated, this is gonna to be to your mid to high handicapper. And there's a couple of reasons for that one. Let me just clip one away here. I'm excited about these. And that is one of the reasons exactly there. Forgiveness, the ZX4's aimed at a player who's looking for that little bit more forgiveness in their irons. They don't want to have a bladed like iron where if they just miss the middle, they're not gonna get as much out of their ball fight as they would want or expect, as where ZX4 is the opposite. It's the slightly bigger of all the models. It's got a thicker top line, a wider sole, and a longer profile from toe to heel. So it does look a little bit bigger when you put it in behind the ball against the other models as we go down the line. But the benefit, like I say, is that if you do get that miscentered strike, you're still going to see that you're getting away with those shots. Also, the actual construction of this club this isn't a fully forged head like the other irons this has a forged face because it has a forged face cup actually put onto the irons head here and the reason for that being is that they've made what they call the mainframe now which we see actually in the zx4 and the zx5 and that is this little cup that sits here and actually behind the club heads um, face there's almost like little gaps and little areas where they've been able to move weight around so they can position it a little bit more toe orientated and a little bit more heel orientated to again help with that stability it also makes it fast across the face so like i say this iron oh that is powerful and as we've taken it out onto the golf course as well it was definitely noticeable when hitting some of the shots. I think there was an instance where I've hit an eight iron in the ZX7 and I've hit a nine iron or a comfortable nine iron in the ZX4. I didn't even strike it and it's pitched all the way up to where the ZX7 had gone. So it is much more of a power iron and it is much more of that forgiveness um, aspect built into it. Like I say though, if you're looking at them, be aware that they do look a little bit bigger compared to the other irons. If you're enjoying this video as well, guys, make sure you subscribe and I'll tell you about this little Brucey bonus that they've got. The next iron is the ZX5 iron, and this sort of sits in the middle of the seven and the four. It's sort of getting a bit of best of both worlds. So it's for that player that is looking for an air of forgiveness, but doesn't want that big profile head, doesn't want to see the thick top line, doesn't want to see a, a longer blade profile. But, you know, when they're not quite striking out of the middle, they still do want to get away with a little bit. So you do see, like I say, a little bit of a difference between them. As you go down through all the models, the four, the five and the seven, it is evident that as you're working down from four to seven, everything is getting a little bit smaller and a little bit thinner. 
Now the five also does comprise the mainframe um, technology that they've put in there. We see technologies from the past in the original models of the ZX um, range that they had the VT Soul. We see progressive grooves, but it's mainly this mainframe and the power frame that they've put into the um, ZX7, the, the, the new additions in there. They also look a little bit sexier, I would say, than last time, but this mainframe, like I say, just allows for a little bit more weight to be moved around. And this one here, the 7, I think what a lot of players are doing as well out on tour is getting a, a longer iron, maybe a 4 or 5 iron in the 4, in the 5s, and then getting the rest in 7s because they want that sleek look. I think one thing is evident. They actually feel really good. And I think Shrixen itself doesn't get credited enough for how good their forging processes are and how their forging actually feels for, for something that, you know, is a little bit less known and not really that well played or shouted about in the greater grand scheme of things, you know, compared to a tailor-made a Callaway. The actual clubs feel and they sound really good as well. I mean, that just sounds class. It is evident as well, when you do go from four to five, that distance aspect and that feel, the four itself feels a little bit more punchy, like it is coming off a little bit faster when you do hit it. And the third and final model is this one, the ZX7. Now this is aimed at your lower handicapper. And as you can see, we're going from mid to high to mid to low. And the reasoning for that one, the ZX7, it doesn't look as fancy and hasn't got as much technology to boost almost as the others. This one comes with the pure frame, which is just a thicker piece of steel basically behind the sweet spot to allow for a better feeling blade, as you, a better feeling iron as you're actually hitting it. Now, I actually had the ZX7 Model 1s, and I think they were a fantastic iron, and really, these just look a little bit cleaner, I would say. I think behind the golf ball, as we've seen throughout the models, the top line is a lot thinner. The blade length looks a little bit more compact than previous models. Um, whether it is or not, I don't actually know about that, but it's, it's looking a little bit um, more compact. The, the previous models for me, toe to heel, just looked a little bit stretched, almost looked like a, a five or a four as where now they look a little bit more like a player's iron here. And in terms of that feel, again, just with having this pure frame and a bit more of the steel position behind where the sweet spot is, definitely get that better feeling, get that solid forge feeling when you do for, go from it. And they do sound really, really nice. Now, you're not gonna get a massive amount of forgiveness because there's only a small cavity in there, but again, aimed at that lower handicapper, they're not gonna be looking for that. So just to recap, we've got the ZX4, which is aimed to your mid to high handicapper, looking for that higher flight, ultimate forgiveness and ultimate distance. We've got the ZX5, which is aimed to your mid handicapper, who's looking for a medium flighted ball, medium to high, looking for mid forgiveness, mid distance, but looking for a little bit more of a sleeker look. Then we move into the ZX7, which is more of your low handicapper iron, which is all about control, workability, and having that sleeker, more compact look. If you're enjoying this video as well, guys, make sure you subscribe and I'll tell you about this little Brucey bonus that they've got. So the ace up their sleeve as well in the lineup would be this. It's their sort of utility driving iron. It's the ZX driving iron and I must say, this is one of the sexiest looking driving irons I have seen come out this, this year, if not in the last few years. So the technology behind this one, we're seeing the actual mainframe that we see in the ZX4 and the ZX5. It's got a multi-piece construction. So again, the face has been put onto there. It has got the forged head, but I tell you what, when you get this in behind the golf ball, it does look sexy. It's quite a small profile. It's got a, a sort of larger sole, but toe to heel, it looks very much like the ZX7, but then it's got the sort of backing of the four and the five, just to give you a little bit of confidence that you're gonna be able to, to get this one away. And when hitting it, 
it goes like a rocket. I mean, that wasn't my best strike there and that's carried nearly 230 yards. And it's, it's not that penalizing as a two iron, 18 degrees, still launches. And especially out on the golf course when you're hitting it off a tee, this thing is just beautiful. Feels sensational, you're getting that good forge feeling and the sound sounds really powerful like it's packing a good punch and it's got got a good air of workability about it as well I mean, that is just that is brilliant i absolutely love that club workable easy to pick up off the ground off the tee excellent and it really is I do see this going into quite a lot of players' bags, especially out on tour. I think we'll see a lot of the ZX model being in there because it is a, a good looking number. Oh, that just feels awesome. And it packs a punch. I mean, I crushed that one. That's 235 there. It's a beautiful, beautiful thing, that one. I really, really do like the look of that one. Just looks compact but got that slightly bigger sole just to give you that little bit more confidence and that little bit of forgiveness there whilst still keeping its players looks about it that is a thing of beauty so i have a question to ask about Shrixen because it's a brand like i say that i don't think will find its way into many people's bag and i want to know why is that I've got a couple of thoughts that I'll share with you, but how do you feel about the Strixen brand? Obviously, they've got major winners in the likes of Shane Lowry, Hideki Matsuyama. We know that they've been around for years. They own companies like Cleveland and Zexio being their parent company. They make fantastic products, but it's one that I think even when we do reviews on Strixen stuff, it's not almost sometimes the most after or most asked after or most sought after review. But they always come out looking great, sounding great, they feel great, they perform great. Obviously they've got the backing of tour players. Is it that they don't shout enough in the media? Are they not pumping enough marketing out like maybe a Callaway, maybe a TaylorMade does that makes them not as maybe desirable as some other brands, but let me know your thoughts. Comment down below, because I'd be interested to see if it marries up with what I think, because it does baffle me. I, I, I think so many more players should have Shrixens in their bag. Because they do, they do work, they do work. So the next thing that we have to talk about is the price of these irons. If we're looking at a five piece set, which is six to pitching wedge, you're looking at 999 pounds recommended retail. You'll probably find them a little bit cheaper actually once you get into stores, but recommended is 999 pounds. So that's 200 pounds per iron. Now, if you wanted to probably go to four or five, you're into that 1,400 mark, which is higher than a set of Mizunos, it's higher than a set of TaylorMades, it's round about the same price for a Paradigm set, I think, at the moment. So it is on the top echelons of that price. So is that something that is putting people off, potentially? One of my other thoughts is that I made a video about the ZX7s and some other Cleveland products, I think the driver of the Strixen driver last year. And to my memory, I can only really recall one shop that I know that does it around my local area. I couldn't stand here or sit here now and name five pro shops, five retailers that sell Strixen products. As where if we think of Titleist, Mizuno, Callaway, you know, Cobra, I'd be able to at least name three, four or five retailers or shops that do stock it. So is that one of the problems as well that we see people not getting them in their bags because of their limited availability? Do we see that people actually don't know the name enough or trust the name enough or have enough want for the name to actually go and find them, sound them out to get them in their bags? Because like I say, they work they look good, they perform, 
they are good irons, but at the moment, it's the iron that I think you probably should buy, but you're not gonna buy. Guys, I hope you've enjoyed it. Hit me with some comments on your thoughts, and I'll see you in the next video.